Master dog trainer Graham Hall has spent his working life traveling the country, dealing with out of control dogs. How? <coughs> Somsy, enough! <coughs> Bringing harmony and order to their hapless Super. owners. His mantra is simple. Any breed, any size, any problem. No, uh, <laughs> he faces his toughest challenge yet. No. Taking on the naughty dogs of the rich and famous. You're lovely people, but um, you're a bit clueless. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so just say it is. Tonight, three celebrity dog lovers in desperate need of Graham's help. In Essex, a diva dog whose runaway antics are presenting a huge problem. There's a road there. She could get knocked down and killed. Hitting the high notes in Wilmslow, a shouty Saluki who's not in tune with his celebrity owner. I've got one of the world's greatest tenors here whose timing's out and his turn's wrong. That's ironic for a musician. Right. Um. <laughs> and on the Welsh borders, a football legend whose staffy goes on the attack. The last time he was close to a strange dog, he was hanging off its neck. Which has him living in fear. Oi! First in Graham's celebrity casebook is a little dog that's giving her showbiz superstar owner the runaround by refusing to listen to a word she says. She's all right, she's in the push. Tilly, come here. Come on. And the famous face being given the runaround is... I mean, seriously. Actor, presenter and West End star Denise Van Outen. She just ignores us all the time. Denise and her partner Eddie are run ragged by their 14-month-old French bulldog Tilly. It's like we haven't got control over our own dog. The more they call her back... Here. Tilly! Tilly, no. ..the more she runs. I keep shouting, Tilly, come here. Literally a thousand times every time we go for a walk, so it gets a bit much. And we've tried calling her, we've tried ignoring her, we've tried treats, we've tried calling her in with toys, everything. It's a standoff between us and the French Bulldog. But what seems like fun and games could have disastrous consequences. As soon as that doorbell goes, she's by the front door, she's just waiting oh. to dart out the front, isn't she? Tilly would just be out straight onto the road. And also, if the gates are closed, she would just go underneath. So we live on a country road and people drive quite fast around here, don't they? Yeah, so exactly. It's, um, it's quite dangerous. If Tilly does get out, then who knows what could happen? I dread to think. And obviously, once she sees us panic, the dog panics even more, thinks it's a game, and then she's out the gates, and it's really frightening. Tilly moved in with Denise and Eddie when she was just a pup. We had talks about possibly having a child together, but then we sat down and we thought about it. Eddie's got two grown-up kids, my daughter's nine. We're like, well, between us, we have got three kids, so why don't we just get a fur baby instead? Lunchtime. What's she going to have? And the words fur and baby couldn't be more appropriate. Choo-choo. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So you have pampered cheese. Being waited on hand and foot. And what would you like for dessert, madame? Is just the start. Because she gets hot in the summer, I even had an air conditioning unit put in the kitchen yeah. for the dog. You tell me what dog has his own air conditioning unit. Please, tell me. Well, you rock her to sleep. He rocks her to sleep. <laughs> this is the baby that we never had. But Denise is a busy working mum and keeping Tilly from running ragged near the road is having an impact on the whole family. Tilly. Tilly. Tilly, come here. Tilly. 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 You literally do feel if anything happens, the anxiety levels you know, flare up and you find yourself her running out of the house and you're screaming your head off as you would to a child that you thought was going to step out into the roads. My daughter says it to me all the time, you know, before she goes to sleep, will Tilly be all right? She's part of our family and we love her to bits. I've worked with loads of French Bulldogs because, they, you know, they're very popular now and they're cute, they're great pet dogs. They don't often want to be trained because they've got their own ideas about what they should be doing. But possibly one of the biggest problems with French Bulldogs is um, the owners. 
<laughs> so can Graham rein in this runaway before it's too late? Hello. Graham, How hello. are you? Welcome to nice Essex. Oh. We're doing now. <laughs> we do hugs here. That's good. Hey, Tilly, pleased to meet you. Tilly's not here because we've had to put her in the kitchen because right. this is what we want to help with. She just runs out the front door. And out um, and through those gates. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And they're big enough for her to get through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shall we meet her then? Yes, yeah. lovely. Cool. Come on. Who's this? Hello. <gasps> Hello. Who's this? Hello. Hello. Oh, you're cute, aren't you? Tilly. Tilly, Tilly. Hello. Oh, look, she matches your jacket. She does rather, doesn't she? <laughs> there you go. I should have known. She's a bit nippy as well. That's your way of loving people, isn't it? Eh? I know. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I love you, I'll bite you. <laughs> Hello. It's a bit like me, Graham. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> Hello. So, tell me about your problems then. So, the main thing is recall. If you call her name, she'll stop, won't she? She'll look at you. Yeah. And then it's almost like you're going to chase me. Ah, uh, yeah. And yeah. then, and it's just a real worry. My biggest fear is with the road there, Tilly will just run off and we'll never see her again. It scares me. I've had nightmares about it. Plus, I've got a nine year old daughter and I panic, she panics. Yeah. We all go into meltdown. We've got no control over it. So, those two problems are kind of connected, aren't they? So, if she bolts at the door if it's ever open and you've got these gates that open onto this scary road. Yeah. And you can't call her back if you tried. It's a very anxious head. <laughs> it sounds like we're on edge all yeah. the time. Right, so I really want to see what happens when she bolts out the door. So I've arranged for somebody to to ring the buzzer thing. I hope you're a fast uh, runner. Uh, well, I'm, yeah. Uh, well, I'm rather hoping that you'll be able to catch it. Because oh. I need to see what you do. That's the point. Oh, who's that? Oh. Who's that? Who's this? Who's that? Who's that? Oh, 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 oh. Till, till, Tilly. 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 Here. Here. Tilly, come here. Here. He's Tilly. heading towards the Tilly. gates at the moment. Tilly! Tilly, here. Go on that side. Go on that side. Tilly's just run around my car uh, and underneath. <laughs> got Denise and Eddie running around in circles trying to get her. And there is no control at all. In fact, there is control, but it's all in Tilly's hands, you know? Denise is really, really frustrated and stressed. Tilly, I can see on. that. Inside, I'm crying. Here, here. Oh, mind the gate. Here. My fear is this big gate here, because if yeah. she gets underneath, there's a road there and anything could happen. I don't know what to do. No, all right. And the problem with this is I haven't got a magic wand right now that just goes, do this and she'll do it. This requires a bit of training, so she knows what to do when it happens. You know what I mean? I'll give you a hand, though. We'll get her back. Oh, thank you. As best you. we can. Come on. Please, Graham. But even with Graham here, Tilly has her own ideas and darts through a bush. I panic. Tilly. Tilly, come here. Come here. We've lost her before, twice. Come here. Hey, hey, hey. Come here. Hey, hi. Come here. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, please come back. Coming up, Graham's got to give this dog some boundaries. But first... I can't even look. He's got to catch her. And he meets Poppy, a shouty Saluki, whose belting voice is giving her famous owner a bad name in the neighbourhood. Across Britain, master dog trainer Graham Hall helps dog owners who are struggling with their badly behaved pooches. Today, he's helping television presenter Denise Van Outen and her partner Eddie get to grips with their fur baby, French bulldog Tilly. Her love of escaping and running towards the busy road is giving the family sleepless nights. My biggest fear is Tilly will just run off and we'll never see her again. Having seen Tilly's recall issue firsthand... She's off. Oh, 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 oh. Right. Till, till, Tilly. 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 Till. Graham yeah. now needs to help find her before she comes into danger. She's now run through the fence. Hey, hey, hey. I can't even look. There's a good girl. That's it. That's it. Oh, she's right. back. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, gosh. You can see what our problem is. Just a bit. <laughs> I mean, how often does this happen? Every time. Pretty Which... much every time, yeah. I mean, it's just the best game ever for her, but I think, you know, she doesn't understand the dangers. There's a very serious point to this, which is the consequences of her running away from here uh, you know, could, could lead to something catastrophic. There's a road there, which is a very fast road. She could get knocked down and killed. With Tilly's safety at stake... Right, should we have a cup of tea? Shall we? That yeah, I like need one plan. now. Come I'll put on, the then. kettle on. Graham is keen to get to the root of the problem. So, tell me a little bit about why you got her and the background and all that. My daughter had kept saying she's the only child that she'd love to have a dog. We were, at the same time, also talking about possibly starting a family. 
but then thought we're in our 40s so we just said instead of getting a dog should we just get a fur baby instead right that way we have our baby right and then betsy my daughter has got a little pet to play with so you you basically got her because she looked pretty yeah we should feed her now shouldn't yeah, we really yeah, yeah. 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 just watch the fact that she hasn't eaten she can be quite fussy of what she eats and how she eats it i've seen it all I think I can honestly say I've, I've worked now with over 5,000 dogs and I've never seen anybody feeding a dog with a silver spoon. Welcome to Essex. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Graham's seen enough and it's time to deliver some home truths. I get completely that you're lovely people and you, you mean the best, but... Um, but... You're, you're a bit clueless. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's just fair, it is, Graham. Well, I might as well. Done old back. Um, kind of created a spoiled child, you know? She just gets what she wants. In your house, it's, it's pretty clear who's, who's, who's the boss. So, how do we fix it? We all need rules, don't we? You've done the nicey-nicey stuff, often at the wrong times, and you never actually go, no, that's naughty. You would probably do that with a child. That's true, actually. So what's happening here is that Eddie and Denise are trying to get Tilly under control, but what they don't realise is that in their efforts to do that, they're shouting, stop, stop, and what Tilly's hearing is, carry on, this is great fun. Graham won't be able to stop Tilly from running out of the house and into danger until Denise and Eddie can get her to obey a simple command. So this means going right back to basics. Can I suggest, Tilly, come. As simple as that. Okay. And it needs to be as bright and exciting as that. Which Tilly, does come! The you know. save of your voice as well, just goes up and yeah. goes up slightly. Because so it yeah. needs to sound like, ooh, ooh, I need to do okay. that. You know? Graham's approach to teaching a dog, who has never learnt the rules, is to start with recall training, using a long lead, left slack, so that Tilly feels free to roam. So she's moved around, doing her thing, and she's now acting like a dog who's not on lead, isn't she? But it'll give the ability to send a message with a clear flick. Tilly, come! Uh -huh. When they want Tilly's attention. Tilly, come. Good girl. That's super. Oh, look at that. Good girl. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Remember, it's the first time she's heard my voice oh, recalling okay. her, right? And we just got a better recall there than we had with you guys working as a team ish yeah. out, the, right. out the front <laughs> earlier. <laughs> yeah. But that's, by f that's a long way from the finished article. What you should start to get is you go, Tilly, come. She goes, no, maybe one flick. Oh, yeah, OK. And she comes back. Then eventually, it's like, Tilly, come. Oh, yeah, don't flick me. I know what I have to do. Yeah. I run back. It might be easy for Graham, but this French here has flouted the rules for a year. So can Eddie find his voice and get Tilly to obey? Right, when you're ready, off you go. Tilly, come. Tilly, come. What happens to the bright no, one? I know, I know. Tilly, no, come. that's not good. You need to be a bit. Tilly, my voice. come. Yeah, that's like... Tilly, listen. Tilly, come. That's it. That's it. That'll do. Right. Tilly, come. I'm not singing. Tilly, come. That'll do. Right. Okay, right, here we go. Remember? Right, okay, I've got it. Marvellous. So I'm going into opera mode. Come. So when you're ready, okay. do the voice. Yeah. Don't flick her straight away. No. Only flick her if she doesn't, doesn't come. Okay. Tilly, come. Oh, she's coming. Look. Good girl. Tilly, that's come. super. Yay. Good girl. Come on, then. Come. Good girl. Tilly, come. Good girl. Brilliant. All the way back. Good girl. That worked. Your voice was good enough that she actually went, oh, OK, and she started to move. Now, she went all around the houses, but she came back to us, yeah? yeah. We didn't need to flick her to remind her. That's exactly what we've got to do. Okay. We've just got to do it again and again and again. Right, okay. Tone is particularly important because to a dog, it's just the sound they're hearing. It's not the words particularly. So. With men, it's very difficult to get a happy tone of voice. We tend to be a bit more gruff. So standing there shouting, Tilly, come, that's never going to work. Ladies generally do it better than us. But as Eddie's just proved, no reason a man can't get it right. Under Graham's guidance... Tilly, come. Super. Good girl. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. girl. You come down with me, look. Tilly, hey, good girl. Clever girl, that's come super. In. Eddie has found his voice. So it's over to Denise. Tilly, come. Tilly, come. Let's do it again, come on. Okay. Tilly, come. That's it. Tilly, come. Good girl. Ooh, that looks happier. Yeah? Good girl. Yay. Come on, darling. Yeah, He's a clever good girl. girl. Clever girl. I don't believe I'm about to say this, but his tone of voice is better than yours, right? I'm not right? having that, <laughs> I am not Get having it. it. I told because you. Because your tone is nice, but it's a little bit light, right? Too so it's light. like, Tilly, come. It, it's, so firm, I'm exaggerating. Firmer. Yeah, but brighter, louder. Actually, is what I want. Louder. Well, okay, let's have yeah. another go. So you're filling a theatre, kind of thing. Yeah. Right? Okay. Denise is no stranger to the stage. Come Tilly, on. come. 
Yes, she's coming, Lou. No flick. And with Tilly as her audience... There you go. Good that's girl. It. Clever girl. Good that's girl. super. This Frenchie's finally listening to her mum. Tilly, come. Yes, she's yes. coming, Lou. Tilly, come. Yeah, clever girl. There you go. Fantastic. Better than Eddie. Um, yes, better than yes. Eddie. Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not off the hook yet, um, because I think while I'm here, we should try it with the lead off. Let's see what we can do. Okay. Ooh, are you up for it? Yeah. Yes. yeah, definitely. Without the lead to give Tilly a gentle nudge, will Eddie's voice alone be enough? Pressure's on. Hey. I mean, I'm going to smash it. Right, when you're ready, off you go. Tilly, come. Yes. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, come on, then. Good girl. Good girl. Yay! Good girl. Yeah. Fantastic. After months of giving them the runaround, Tilly's responding to the couple's new recall command for the very first time. One command only. Yeah. No lead to help you out. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what, about an hour in, I something like that. Perfect, mate. You're the main. Well, Denise and Eddie have done well getting Tilly to listen to them for the very first time, but that's just the first part of a, a bigger challenge, and that's getting Tilly not to bolt when that door's open and run onto the main road and get herself killed. Now, I won't lie, that's a really difficult challenge, but it's one for another time. Graham's next celebrity with a doggy dilemma is in Wilmslow in Cheshire, one of the most desirable postcodes in the UK. But there's one dog creating a racket that's most undesirable. <laughs> Today, the celebrity in need of help is... Opera singer Russell Watson. <laughs> who may be famous for his voice, but round Wilmslow Way, his three-year-old Saluki's bark is making him famous for all the wrong reasons. If she is a dog outside the garden, she's... <laughs> You've never seen anything move so quick yes. on four legs. She rips it up there. She rips round here. She, whenever there's anyone there's walks a dog past her, there's a dog, there. she goes bananas. It's almost like she's... Possessed. Russell and his wife Louise already had two well-behaved dogs. But when they heard about a rescue in need of a good home, they felt compelled to take the young puppy in. There was a big article about her on social media and on the news um, about what had happened to her. She was really badly abused. In fact, she was thrown out of a car um, on a motorway at uh, 70 miles an hour. It's, re it's actually really quite upsetting because she, she found her, she was in a big pool of blood because she'd snapped all her legs. Mm. And her tail was still wagging, which... The nature just, of her. Yeah, demonstrates she's got a really lovely nature. She instantly struck a chord with Russell and he didn't hesitate to adopt her. She come running into this place like the dog who just won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> she was straight round the back garden. Yes! Am I actually staying here or is this just like a holiday? holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but Russell and Louise quickly discovered when you adopt a dog with a troubled past, you also take on their fears. When she first arrived here, you'd go to stroke her and she'd, she'd duck down as though she'd been hit. And eventually she became really, really quite hostile mm. um, towards other dogs. Poppy's behaviour is so bad, dog walks are now plagued by abuse from other owners. You know, you get people walking towards you. There's a guy one day, dog came running up to Poppy. Poppy's going crazy. Holistic. You want to get it under control, mate? I said, she's been really badly abused. You ought to get it under control. So sometimes people just aren't. You can't have an enjoyable walk. Aren't understanding, and it's quite sad, really. With Russell spending much of his time performing around the world, it's Louise who bears the brunt of the problems. <laughs> it stresses me the most when I'm out walking on my own. I just feel a bit scared, <laughs> worried, because she's going to go off her head. With Louise frightened to go out on walks alone, Poppy's often left at home and she'll put her feet out. She'll put her head yeah, in, in right. between her feet and she'll just go, oh! I can hear her up the road going, oh! With Poppy at risk of becoming a recluse, the new lease of life Russell and Louise hope to give her is now hanging in the balance. If Graham was, was able to sort Poppy's problems out, it, it would be fantastic because it would mean that we'd be able to integrate her fully with the other two mm. dogs, take her for walks, 
um, socialise with her, you know, where there was a lot of other dogs as well. That would be tremendous because we can't do that at the moment. So the pressure is on Graham to calm this stressed out Saluki and give her the life Russell and Louise feel she really deserves. Salukis are known amongst dog trainers as being not easy to train, let's say. So I think I'm on the back foot before I start here. Hello, Louise, isn't it? Oh, hello. Nice to meet you. Russell, hello. Hi, how are you? Shall I come in? Come on, they'll follow me in, I think. So come on then. Come on. Oh, hello. Oh, it's Mayhem. Tell you what, let's herd them all in and we'll go and have a chat, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Great. Come on, you lot. You. Come on. That is. So tell me about your problems with, with Poppy then. As soon as we get her out there with other dogs, she doesn't seem to mingle. If we've got her out on the lead and she sees another dog coming towards us, you can immediately feel her starting to right. get tense. What's her story? She's been thrown out of a, a van on the motorway at 70 mile an hour, we were told. I mean, let's be honest, she's, she's won the doggy lottery. I mean, she's landed up here with oh, two lovely people you. and a great home. We don't feel like that we're giving her what we could give her. You know, we could give her even more with nice walks, days out. Yeah. It sounds as though Poppy's had quite a bit of trauma in her life before being rescued by Russell and Louise. And I, I don't know quite what's gone on, but it sounds as though she's had some nasty experiences with other dogs. But in order to help her, I've got to see what she's like. So it's off to a local park. But no sooner are they out of the car, Poppy's kicking off. Yeah, so you got from the car to here and, OK. <laughs> we didn't get very far. No, did we, we didn't. Do... How are you feeling? Nervous. Yeah? Looking, I'm like, well, where's the next one coming from? I'm certainly on edge. I've got to be honest, I, I don't from. normally feel that nervous, but seeing the amount of dogs that are around this area, I feel a little bit more uh, <laughs> so, edgy than normal. <laughs> you're a bloke who sings in front of 100,000 people or something in a stadium and you're nervous. I mean, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. This isn't... Let's go for a walk then. And I'm going to just be a few steps behind you. Because okay. I just want to, at this stage, observe. Well, it started off really badly in the car park. And I think there's another dog coming. <laughs> Well, this is really interesting because I thought I was going to see a dog that was nervous of other dogs, but what I'm actually seeing is that they're riling Poppy up by holding on to that lead. So it's not Poppy that I have to work on, it's Russell and Louise. But can Graham silence this Saluki? I think she's nervous. And he tackles a football striker's staffy. He is, really. He is. Who's been up to some foul play. Master dog trainer Graham Hall is in Wilmslow, helping opera singer Russell Watson and his wife Louise with their rescue dog, Poppy. Having seen how she reacts when she meets other dogs, Graham needs to share his findings with the couple to ensure they're all singing from the same hymn sheet. I wanted to see the problem with Poppy. I think she's anxious, she's a nervous mm. dog. In that moment before she actually loses it, you look hesitant, you don't look like a leader. <laughs> I've got one of the world's greatest tenors here whose timing's out and his turn's wrong. <laughs> That's ironic for a musician. And a nervous dog needs to trust you and look at you and think, you know what you're doing. But we need to make a start, so... Yeah. Uh, OK. Let's go. Let's get cracking. Right. Clearly they know that their anxiety is partly fueling Poppy's bad behaviour, but I don't think they have a clue how to change that around. Now, I think it's really simple. I think we just need to prove to Poppy that the world isn't a scary place. But in order to do that, they need to change their ways. Graham has many techniques to help build a dog and owner's confidence. For Russell, Louise and Poppy, it's a slalom course, combined with a lead technique to slowly introduce Poppy to other dogs to stop her from lashing out. I'm sure you've noticed these cones I've set out. Um, so we've got a training exercise set up, right. Before we get going, if we put a harness on her, that's got nervous written what? on it. <laughs> that is brilliant. But we're just telling people. Oh, she's not horrible brilliant. and nasty, she's oh. just nervous, and that's why she's acting that oh, way. Good. People will be a bit more understanding, maybe. And if you're more relaxed, Poppy's going to be more relaxed, isn't she? That's it, Russell, thank you. 
Now, instead of dropping them in the deep end and walking straight up to the dog, we're going to walk around the cones. And then if Poppy reacts, then they can just distract her with a quick flick on the lead and carry on going. Now, the key is to keep Poppy close, but to keep the lead slack so as not to put their anxiety onto her. The message we're sending out to Poppy is, dogs are fine, it's OK. You don't have to react, get rid of them by barking. So first of all, let me show you how I would do it, just the first couple of cones. Okay. And then I'll hand over to you and I'll come with you. So, come on, you. Good girl. <laughs> She's not expecting it, so. Graham's showing that with a confident, relaxed grip, with a quick flick of the lead and a change of direction... Ah, uh -uh. no. Poppy's aggressive barking has disappeared. Yay! Now the couple have seen what Poppy can do, can Russell hold his nerve and follow in Graham's footsteps? So try and stay relaxed, you know, walk with her. And the trick is to walk with a purpose, calmly, and keep moving, always keep moving. How are you feeling? Um, marginally nervous. Right, let's go for it. That's it. Don't stop, keep moving, keep moving, that's it. Don't drag her, Russell. Give her a little flick if you have to, but it's one of those situations where when nothing happens, that's really good. Good, eh? <laughs> she didn't even flinch, and the lead is, is limp. Yeah. So you're... It's normally like... Yeah. Yeah. Right. So what's happening is <laughs> there's another little change here, which is you're leading oh, her, but not, oh, like, God. dragging her around. Yeah. Yeah? Fantastic. Yeah. I am over the moon. Couldn't have gone better. Russell has shown that he can confidently lead Poppy. Yeah, right, right, right. But can Louise keep calm and carry on? Don't hang around, cos you'll get nervous. Just go for it. That's it. Go get him. Go for you. Yeah, go for it. I think she's nervous. We're going up to the fourth cone. Ooh. That's it. If necessary, guide around with your leg, yeah? After a shaky start, Louise is finding her feet. Look at Poppy now. And with her newfound confidence rubbing off on Poppy, the dog looks calm and in control. Poppy looks uh, so much happier. Uh, there are moments when she goes from, I'm not sure, to this like, oh, <laughs> like a little trotting pony. Louise has successfully walked around all four cones. But now for the big test, to get Poppy close to the other dog. She, she looks relaxed now. She looks like a lady walking a dog in a park, and it, it's just nice. It's going to be fine. And Louise pulls it off with ease. She's nailed it already. I can see that. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. You're proud of her? Very. <laughs> yeah, so you should be. Just a couple of hours ago, Poppy was a dog terrified of the world. But with a simple technique to keep both the owners and dog calm, she's happy to share her space with another dog. Yeah. That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> you are a genius. <laughs> you will very quickly get to the point where you can come out for a walk in a lovely place like this. I actually got a bit emotional because it was like just relaxed, like enjoying a walk and enjoying life. It's fabulous. It means that they can walk Poppy and Louise, if necessary, can do that on her own when Russell's busy with his tours. Instead of being infamous in Wilms, though. Maybe she'll be the Watsons' famously well-behaved dog. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Whilst Graham leaves Russell and Louise in a more peaceful place, for his next celebrity job, he's off to the Welsh borders to meet a Staffordshire Bull Terrier that's dangerously out of control. And a football legend owner... <laughs> ..desperate for help. I often think dog training is a bit like football in that it's a game of two halves. So you've got the dog and teaching them new commands and how to obey them, and you've got the owner and, and really getting them to make changes in themselves so they can get the best out of their dog. And the football star hoping to get his dog back on side... Good. ..with a little help from Graham, is England legend Michael Owen. He would literally do this all day. But when his five-year-old staffy Ronnie is not attacking the ball, 
Michael's worried he'll be attacking other dogs. Ronnie's a cracking dog, but he just simply doesn't like other dogs. And Michael has good reason to be on guard. Six months ago, when he turned his back, Ronnie attacked a dog that happened to pass the grounds. The incident was caught on camera. By the time I could run there, get there, he was fighting this dog and it was quite savage. He literally, you know, wasn't going to let go and, until I really got there and screamed down his ear and physically grabbed him. You know, it caused the, the dog in question to need a couple of stitches on his, uh, on his neck. But at home with daughters Jess and Emily, Ronnie is the complete opposite of aggressive. Yes. He's so good with people. He's just a he is a he is a diamond of a dog. Ronnie might be a people pleaser, but his decorum towards other dogs is so vicious, Michael's now too scared to take him on family days out. I would like Ronnie to not be aggressive to other dogs so we can we can take him on lots of more walks and go to the beach and things. Unless something is done, Michael fears the family pet they're all so fond of could reach a tragic end. If he did attack another dog, then, then the worst, of course, could be the worst, you know, whether he, he got put down or taken away. He's attacked one dog in his life, which is one dog too many. And I just can't afford that to happen for anybody's sake, let alone Ronnie's. But will Graham be able to get Ronnie under control and prevent a canine catastrophe? Well, Staffordshire Bull Terriers, Staffies, um, were, well, they were bred to, to move bulls around, basically, and they do that by nipping. So they've got themselves a bit of a reputation for being aggressive, and that, that really is unfounded, because you, you can make of a Staffy whatever you want. They, they can be great family pets, and in the right hands, they're just lovely, lovely dogs. It's just the minority that spoil it for everyone else. Hello, Graham. Hi, Michael. Nice to meet you. How's yeah, things? Right. Nice very well, you, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, welcome. I hear you're going to help me with my dog, Ronnie. Where is he then? Is he, is he here? He's inside. Do you want to come see him? Shall we come meet him? Yeah, yeah, come on, let's go. He might be a bit excitable. Right. I'll um, warn you straight away. Hello. Hello. Oh, you're lovely, you are. Come here, then. Hey. Ronnie is a beautiful dog. He is so nice with, with, uh, with people, with everything, anything and everything. He's got a great temperament but he just hates other dogs. I'm a little bit scared for the kids to take him out on a walk. So how, how bad does it get? It's got bad once. To give Graham an insight into the level of aggression, Michael feels he has to show him the attack. You can see the dog walker. Oh, yeah. This is Ronnie in behind the trees. Oh, yeah. So you can see Ronnie trotting along. I mean, yeah. he couldn't. It's just perfect in terms of timing, isn't oh, it? Oh, isn't it? He's clapped eyes. Yeah. You can see he stops there. Yeah. And then, boom. Yeah, there was no ifs and buts there, was there? No. Basically, we can't have that happen again. Well, well that footage was certainly scary. I, know, I need to understand what's driving this. And, you know, the thing is that, you know, at one point in history, Staffies were bred for some dog fighting. So, you know, could there be a bit of aggression going on there? I, I don't know. But I am apprehensive because I don't want this to get out of control. Following the incident, Michael keeps Ronnie restricted to the garden. But at 65 acres, admittedly, it's more than just any garden. Even so, Graham wants to see what happens when he comes across dogs on the other side of the boundary fence. Very so this good. is yeah, this is the field that I tend to run around with him. So you don't really take him walking anywhere else, I presume. It's impossible, yeah. I'd love to take him. We're not far from the beach. The kids would love to do that. Right. Um, but we're just fearful of you know, of, uh, of other dogs. So really the only dogs he meets are the ones who happen by along your public rights away here. That's right. So we're pretty close to that fence right now. Yes. How are you feeling? Well, I've already done the scouring because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> scoured yeah. the line just in case, because yeah. it's just sort of, it's in me now, it's just what I, what I do. I can tell you're quite distracted, we're chatting, but you, you, you're not <laughs> looking at me, you're I'm looking nervous. at the dog and yeah. every yeah. up and down this bridleway. I'm always on edge, really. So now there's a man with a dog. Right, here we go, yeah. Oh, look, he's getting a bit hyped up there. As soon as Ronnie gets close, Michael is quick to react. Ronnie, come on! Right. <laughs> See, there's the aggressive towards him. He's ready for a fight. <laughs> he is, really, isn't he? So his first instinct was to go over there and, and have a, have a pop, yeah. As soon as he barked, that his, you can see his hackles went straight up yeah. and he came running over to have a fight. He did. If there was no fence there, it would have been He'd a He'd have been fight. in trouble. After only a few minutes, Graham thinks he knows where the problems lie. I started this walk expecting to see an anxious dog who's acting aggressively, 
but what I'm seeing is that it's Michael that's anxious. So this isn't an aggression issue, it's a socialisation issue. So why is he like this? Well, he's like this really because you live in a lovely place with lots of land and he hasn't had that socialisation. Yeah. He's not come across many dogs. And when he does, they're kind of on the edge of his bit of land. So socialisation, or lack of, really, has been the problem. Um, sometimes he sees dogs as threats when they, they aren't. It's time for Michael to face up to the reality of the situation. Because of that attack that you had um, and, and you witnessed, um, I think it's changed the way you are with him, you know? And because of that, you come out here and you're like this all the yeah. time because you don't want anything bad to happen, yeah. quite rightly. Makes you look nervous, though. The solution here is pretty simple. Uh, get Ronnie to meet lots of dogs because all breeds, but especially staffies, need to be socialised early on so that they understand that other dogs just aren't a threat. But clearly, Ronnie's missed out on this. So in order for this to work, Michael's got to hold his nerve and approach other dogs with Ronnie without making him anxious. Graham's training technique for socialising Ronnie is simple. With four dogs lined up, Michael needs to walk Ronnie around them in order to teach him that they are not a threat. This is really about Ronnie understanding the norms of social interaction, you know? It's, it's OK to go, oh, hello, nice to meet you, but it's not OK to sort of go, hello, mate, yeah. <laughs> which is what he's doing. So I think we should go and meet the dogs. We're only going to do two or three seconds, and then you're going to go, right, come on, on to the next one. So the whole point of the lead is that he can't escape from you. Nothing bad can happen. You can afford to be confident there. If he does yeah. decide to go, yeah. you'll need to catch the lead, you know. But Michael's already feeling the pressure. The last time he was close to a strange dog, he was hanging off its neck. Very good. I walked through him. Hello, oh, you. Boy. Hello, little one. Right, we can say that. Hello, you. It's Mabel, isn't oh, it? Hello, boy. Mabel. Hello. Hello. Good boy. Who's a good lad? Good That's boy. Fine. Great, let's move on a bit. Good boy. Hello, little puppy. Good boy. Now, give him a bit of slack. Trust me, give him a wee bit of slack. Good boy. Good boy. Michael, give him some slack. Yeah. There you are. Good boy, Ronnie. That's it. Ronnie. And then Ronnie. we'll move Good boy. on. Move on. Oi! No. Do you know what? That wasn't aggression, that was him going, no, Dad, I want to go back. Right, OK. <laughs> I feel as if I'm waiting for him and I'm... You were. And I'm shaking more than him. I'm on edge now. He's picking up on your fear. You know, yeah. it's like, God, he, you know, he drags me back every time I get near a dog, it must be bad. So a lot of this is, even though understandably you are nervous, because you know what he's capable of, you've seen it, you, you still have to go, right, I'm in charge, it's fine. So if you want to shorten your lead again, so you're, yeah. you're ready to catch him if you need to. After a shaky start, can Michael step up? There you go, who's this then? Come here then. Hello, you. Hello. Go it's on. interesting that, he's turning away from the dog, yeah. he's paying Good attention boy. to you. I think he probably thinks he'll get in trouble if he has a lunge again. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Wow. Well. Before, Ronnie was wary of other dogs and Michael feared he'd go on the attack. Now, he's happily socialising for the very first time. So, I thank you, that was great. That was really good. That was really good, yeah. Did you expect yeah. to see that? No, I didn't, no. What was different this <laughs> time? I was a bit more relaxed. You were? For starters. I can't believe how necessarily that keen to go and see them as well. I mean, if you look at that CCTV footage there and compare that with what we've seen here, yeah. it's like two different dogs. Yeah, it? exactly, yeah. So, uh, no, that's yeah. great. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to meet you, Michael. Yeah. And you, Ronnie. And Ronnie. See you, mate. Excellent. Thanks very much. I'll hit the road. He's a boy. He's a... It was really exciting. I'm sure my kids will be really pleased with the change in Ronnie. You know, to get where we've got to is, uh, is a massive step forward. Graham may have transformed Ronnie into a team player, but in Essex, there's still work to be done stopping Denise Van Outen's fur baby, Tilly. This is the baby that we never had. From the unthinkable happening. I can't even look. As Graham's working week draws to a close, he's back in Essex, contemplating the challenge ahead. I'm really worried about today because the last time Tilly ran out of that front door and into danger and we lost her for about 40 minutes. Please come back. Come here. And if I can't stop that happening, she might not be here for very much longer. Graham has taught Denise and Eddie how to use their voices to get Tilly to respond to a simple come command. Tilly, come. That's it. Tilly, come. 
Good girl. Oh, that looks happier. Yeah? Good girl. Yay. Come on, darling. But before the problem is fixed, they need her to respond to a clear stop command when the door is wide open. Come on, young lady. Let's go and have a look at this door. With a long lead attached just in case she bolts, Graham first wants to demonstrate how to set a clear boundary using the stop command. If I just open the door a bit, ah, stop, and if necessary, move around a bit, stop. Good girl. Good girl, that's super. No, stop. If she'd have come forward, she'd, ah, she'd have got stop again, yeah? If she stays put, she gets, oh, good girl. Right, well, OK. OK. Now See, I'm stop. normally in panic mode by this stage. Yeah, so what we're doing now, though, is saying, so look, we're teaching you the rules here. So if I close the door now and open the door again... Yay! Clever girl. There you go. Good girl, Tilly. That's the dog train. <laughs> <laughs> good girl. If that was smugness in any form, so that was the fun. best form. This is me showing off. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, though, isn't it? It is good. Yeah. Can Denise prevent a break for freedom using just the word stop and a leg block to make clear there's a line that cannot be crossed? Nervous? Yeah. <laughs> Let's away. have a go. That's it. Block. Stop. Keep moving. That's it. Moving towards yeah. her. Bit more. Bit more. That's it. Yeah, I think you can open it all the way, actually. Yeah, that's it. So now the door's open. Just Yeah, look, so you see when she's looking at you, she's trying to figure out, OK, how am well, I doing normally here? by now I'm going... I'm panicking. And right. She's darting around my legs. And you still look nervous. Yeah. So, so if she moves towards the door... No. Stop. And move into her. That's it. Now move back again, yourself. Good girl. I mean, I've never seen her just stand at the door like this, have it's you? Great, isn't it? Good girl. I think she's a bit surprised. You know, it's like suddenly these two seem to have rules, <laughs> and they're so very clear. The fact that we've that we've changed in our yeah. approach to her. Good girl, well, Tilly. Tilly. I cannot believe what you have achieved today. You're like a different doggy. But there's still one final obstacle to overcome. Right, I'm going to take the line off her. With Tilly off so, the lead, will the stop command alone be enough to prevent Tilly rushing towards the road? Stop. Stop. This, is, this has never happened before. I've come outside, the door, front door's wide open, open the gates where normally, at this point, Tilly would be out and she hasn't even moved, she's sat in the doorway. She wants to come out, her ears are up, she's, like, inquisitive, but let me just see if I walk out the gates. She follows me. Hasn't moved. That is quite amazing because I don't think in the whole year since we've had her, I've ever been able to come outside and for her to just be by the front door with the door wide open, that's never happened, ever. It's quite amazing, really. Oh, I feel like a really proud mother. <laughs> Graham has proved that by going back to basics, you can transform your dog with a simple command. Forget a dog being man's best friend. I think Graham's my best friend now. <laughs> I cannot believe that we opened the gates. When I first came, I met uh, a pampered pooch here, Tilly, who was Denise and Eddie's fur baby. That's what they said themselves. And the thing is that this was a baby that had never been taught any rules. The surprise, of course, was that actually Tilly's clever, much more clever than I think we all realised. And once I explained the rules in nice, clear terms, she picked them up really well. So she went from a dog behaving badly to a dog behaving really well very quickly. With a few simple commands, this disobedient dog has learnt to listen. And Mum and Dad are secure in the knowledge that for the first time, she's safe. The training that we've had will make a huge difference to our lives because we can just actually enjoy her and not have to worry. Who loves you, baby? In Wilmslow, Russell Watson's nervous rescue dog, Poppy, is learning the world is no longer a scary place. And Louise is happily taking her for walks when Russell's away on tour. On the Welsh borders, Michael Owen's staffy Ronnie is busy making lots of new friends. Well, he's definitely become more aware and more used to other dogs. No running from dogs anymore, he's, uh, he's OK with them. And in Essex, runaway Tilly's obedience is getting better by the day. You know, you come out for a nice family stroll, lovely afternoon, sun shining, and that we can go and have peace of mind knowing that she'll always come back. 